Well, that's the subject of my next book, after uh, Einstein Cosmos comes out. Uh, that book is called Parallel Worlds. It's going through final editing right now. And it'll come out perhaps a full year from now. Okay. And in Parallel Worlds, I ask that very question. Uh, if there is a multiverse, and all the data points to a multiverse now. Mm -hmm. uh, the WMAP satellite um, came out in February with the precise age of the universe. The universe is 13.7 billion years old, plus or minus 1%. And the leading theory that fits that data is something called inflation. And inflation, in turn, is based upon a multiverse of universes, uh, bubbles uh, forming constantly uh, so that our universes coexist with other bubbles. And even as we speak, uh, big bangs have been taking place. And then the question is, what about leaving our bubble? Uh, the WMAP stat, um in February uh, released data that indicates that we're all going to freeze to death uh, no. trillions of years from now. Yes. And it is kind of depressing, but sooner or later, everything runs down. Not nearly so depressing as the first, uh, I don't know, couple and a half hours of the show we've just done. Actually, that says to me, don't worry about freezing to death because you're not going to make it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a brutal odds guy, and as I listen to you, the chance of us getting through this proliferation without without it all coming down around our heads, it's pretty slim. Yeah, but I think the, the way to deal with all these depressing facts is action. You know, I mean, Einstein, many, many giants of the age, Niels Bohr, others, uh, said we must translate our knowledge into action. So they, they circulated petitions. They're trying to do that on the other side, too, you know. Uh, they translate right. their ideas into... Uh, that's right. So, uh, again, uh, you know, history belongs to, to those people who can seize the initiative. And I think it's, it's a good thing that all, all the citizens of this country get activated to participate in the electoral process, to get energized. Uh, and, you know, make your statement felt at the uh, the, the, the voting booth. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, we should have an agenda that uh, does put forth a, a future where we have a future. By the way, speaking of agendas and something a little more cheerful, um, you know, we were going to have a program tonight where we were going to talk about the future of outer space, for example. The president is about to make a big speech all a rumor, all rumor is that he's going to announce uh, the U.S. going back into space, you know, going to the moon or maybe uh, even a base on the moon for going to Mars and all kinds of stuff that he might say, mm -hmm. anniversary of the Red Brothers. And so I did want to get a word or two from you on how you feel about all this. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think we should have a permanent moon base. Um, however, I think it should be robotic. Uh, we left the moon, we went there, scored a touchdown, and came back with our football and just left the moon there. I think we should have a permanent presence on the moon. Why robotics? Uh, because it'd be cheap, wouldn't be dangerous. Um, we would have, uh, be able to, you know, do ten times more things because they're ten times cheaper. They don't have to come back. They don't require life support. Hmm. And we should have these things on the moon. Uh, if you saw the movie 2001, of course, the whole movie is prefaced on the idea that there are uncharted areas of the moon. Uh, we, you know, talking about of visitations from aliens. Absolutely. And like, like I said, I believe that if aliens had ever gone past our solar system, the most likely place for them to have a base or had a base is the moon. Well, do, you, do you think there's a fair chance we actually might uncover uh, some sort of robotic obelisk if we did round enough on them? I can't rule it out. It is the most mathematically efficient way to explore the solar system. Forget Captain Kirk. Uh, the self-replicating von Neumann probes uh, on the moon yes. would be the ideal place to colonize and investigate the galaxy uh, because, you know, uh, enterprises and Captain Kirk's are very expensive and there are very few of them, but self-replicating uh, robotic probes uh, self-replicate. They, they live off the land. You don't have to do anything. Uh, they simply replicate and explore other moons. And our moon is ideal because it circles a planet that has liquid water. Liquid water is a universal solvent. And uh, any alien that came to our solar system millions, billions of years ago would have picked out our Earth as the possible uh, mother of, of life in the future. And they would have left the probe on the moon uh, waiting for us. Let, let me ask you a question about that probe. Let's say we find one, Professor. All right? Mm-hmm. Now... 
I take you back years to a moment where we actually transmitted from Arecibo using the wonderful giant dish at Arecibo. We transmitted a very short transmission to go scorching out in way past everything to whatever life might be out there. We did fire one transmission in one direction, and after that, Professor, they said, you're not doing it anymore. And the reason you're not going to do it anymore, and they were serious about this, is we don't know what the consequences would be of our message getting received. And maybe, you know, somebody will receive it, and maybe we won't be so happy about the fact that they did. In other words, they might not be friendly. That's so they look at us and say lunch. Right? Or whatever, yes. And so now we've got an obelisk on the moon. If we, uh, w w would you recommend going ahead, for example, and uncovering that obelisk, giving it an opportunity, as it did in 2001, to make a transmission that suddenly alarms our presence, or would you advise against it? What a moment of choice that one would be. Well, first of all, the object's probably been there for millions of years. Yes. And, uh, in other words, it's been sending reports all along yes. about the status of uh, carbon-based life forms on a planet that has liquid water. So you're figuring they're watching already? They're probably watching already. Mm -hmm. And they're probably a great distance away, so they're not going to be able to come visit us anytime soon. However, it does mean that we have to realize that we're probably not alone in the universe, that the moon is the most likely place for a uh, visitation, sure. Sure. and that if we go back to the moon, I think that should be in the back of the mind of anyone who wants to set up a permanent moon base there. Right. Let's say there it is, and let's say you discover the obelisk. Uh, yeah, there are huge parts of the moon that are totally unexplored. Would, 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 would you recommend bringing it up and activating it? Uh, in other words, what kind of calculation as a, as a physicist, scientist, would you make about the nature of the people we would eventually meet as a result of what we were about to do? Well, in the movie, an astronaut uh, touches the obelisk and it sends a message to the home planet. That's that, right. That, you know, like a screaming message, right? That, that's right. I would suspect that we should first just analyze it uh, to see what kinds of technologies are involved. Uh, for example, nanotechnology is probably not very big, in which case they've probably been able to harness nanotechnology millions of years ago. And that's why these things could be quite small and is probably capable of self-replication. And so it's probably quite sophisticated, and the moon is very stable. It's been stable for, uh, you know, three, four billion years. Mm -hmm. So an obelisk like this will be stable for an extended period of time. And it's probably already been sending messages. So, but, you know, we don't want to activate it unnecessarily because we don't know their intentions. There you are. I was wondering if you would recommend extreme caution in that. I would recommend like extreme caution, yes. And no. I wonder, what kind of debates would there be about um, the merit of activation? 